Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Insider. My guest this week is a video editor. Why, Damien? Why, you might ask, have I got a video editor on a magic podcast? Well, it's because it's Tony Chang. Tony, thanks so much for agreeing to do the show. How are you this morning? Good. How are you? I'm lovely, thank you. Now, this whole week, because the show drops on a Monday, this whole week we've called Tony Chang Week, and we're dedicating it to uh, your downloads, um, which is very exciting indeed. First of all, your magic origin story. You've got 27 seconds. Mm, that that long, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I'll do it in like a haiku, I guess. Oh, that'd be uh, beautiful. I'll check your syllables, though. Yeah, yeah. Fat kid, too much time. Uh, uh, learn too much lie of hand. Think magic was supposed to be perfect. Disappointed. Then uh, found true love. There you go. Perfect. That rhymed, right? It, it, it almost rhymed, and, and it was only slightly off on the syllable count. Um, I remember coming to visit Manhattan about 20 years ago and on the Genie Forum or somewhere I found out about the Saturday afternoon hangout and I can't remember where it was underneath. It was underneath something, a pizza place or deli or something. Went up and said, uh, was greeted really warmly and um, said that I like card magic and somebody said, oh, you, you need to sit down with Ken Krenzel then. And so I did and he proceeded to mess with my mind for about half an hour. But everything about that scene seemed really warm and welcoming to a limey outsider. What's it like being in the New York magic scene? What's it, what's it like from the inside? Uh, well, that's, that's interesting that you say like that. So you went to the pizza shop, like with Wesley James and all those people. Yeah. Like it, that. But it was in yeah. the basement. Yeah. Oh, in the basement. Uh, I think it was like Mali tacos. Um, I, that's a, that's an interesting way of putting it. I mean, I, went to seattle for my college and mm -hmm. that was the first time i really uh got to see magicians because i grew up in idaho so like you probably don't know where i is i did not see uh, a real magician until right. i went to college so like i had this interesting perspective about magic which is i read a book and i just assumed everything was perfect okay otherwise why would you put it in the book mm -hmm. right that's so that's actually as a kid i'm like yeah, of course I'm going to learn this. Like, so then like, <laughs> I would like palm cards at school because I didn't know it was supposed to be hard. I just did it. Like, you know, there's very interesting things, but very weird tangent. But basically I ended up in Seattle, worked in a few magic shops, met up with Tom Frank, which is an amazing, you know, street performer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made this because he had a magic shop right in dead center of like, downtown seattle in the bar district so and it, he had this perfect back room and then somehow we started getting this like saturday night hangout right with a lot of people and it got it was so interesting because we were like hey uh we were talking about this trick and, and they're like my and then tom would be like yeah i don't know if it's gonna work and he's and we're like yeah it'll work and he's like all right and he just opens up the shop at like midnight just opens up the shop and just goes out there and tells people to come in and goes, all right, do your trick in front of people. <laughs> like he just, just made people do it. You were like, what? And it was the funniest thing because like <laughs> you get these like drunk people like, why is there a magic shop open? And then they go in and they're just like, what? And then, so here's another weird part about magic shops is that, you know, there's not a lot of markup, right? For real magic products, right? It's just, and, and the funny thing is like, you know, like, you're trying to sell like Michael Amar's easy to master miracles to a layman mm -hmm. for like an hour. Right. And you only make what five bucks, you know, it's like, it's not like that much. So Tom in, in all his glory, he would sell these Sako magics, like the, the crappiest, like it's just like a bundle in uh -huh. like this nylon sock, whatever, not nylon, but anyways. And I think wholesale is like, three four dollars but we sold it for eighty eighty dollars like but but he taught us the pitch right like the spin the, the, the stripper deck but the fox the lake fox deck so it's okay. not even bicycle like 40 bucks 
but we would sell it like but, but he taught us how to like do the salesmanship so then mm-hmm. like so that night we would be like <clears throat> doing like real magic you know testing our stuff out and then we would just sell these soccer <laughs> so you see all these drug people <laughs> come <laughs> with this 80 dollar thing they're like, oh this is gonna be great <laughs> but anyways so long when you start anyway so then i was about to go to new york to go to grad school and i heard about ruben's deli right and i'm just like oh man this is gonna be great with seattle you know because i mean it's, like we got like steve hobbs out of the woodworks you know mm-hmm. to hang out like he was a good da of seattle or something or he was a lawyer you know jack carpenter and all these people to come out and i was like oh this is such a great vibrant place and then i go to new york and then definitely missed the ruben deli era right right and what i found out about new york that's different in seattle was that new york had way more professionals right so like from my perspective that that community it's it's very different in New York, right? Because right. they're they're because the, the, I'm not a professional. Sure. I don't even call myself a magician. Definitely a hobbyist, you know, intellectual of what magic academics is. But but the 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 environment here is like nobody really wants to share things. Not because uh, they're hoarding. It's it's not because they're hoarding. It's because it doesn't apply to community based magic you know what i'm saying like okay. that, yeah 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 that, like 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 the, the, the younger people trying to learn things and, and just tinkering with stuff you know like they 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 will have those moves but the, the most of it is like they're like it's like what do we do with the clients and the marketing all that stuff right mm, it's, so, mm. it's such a totally different vibe so so basically we ended up uh, like when people came into town and then like hang out with us my my usual requirement is like, well, can you drink? <laughs> so, because like, because like, like, ultimately, like, New York City is not exactly a town for young people, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's like, and then so we we definitely garnered like an interesting group where like like my friend owns a bar in New York and he's a magician and then so we have these things where like before he got that bar we went to this bar and then it's like the, the bartender's like why is there so many magicians here <laughs> but yeah i don't know if that that's very long-winded but yeah no that's good it's good it's good i like it um what is it that motivates you to push your sleight of hand to such extraordinary levels yeah i guess you know like a lot of people always ask me like that that very question right because i think uh who said this i think derek but uh derek degadio once said he's like hey uh when you put out your book you should call it uh pe- shit people can't do mm-hmm. right <laughs> because it's it's kind of true it's like a lot of my like basic is like oh you do raise rise and people are like what the hell but but i think that what why i want people to walk away from is to say Wow, I didn't know you can think about slight hand this deep, right? Right. And and it, and that's that's basically my message, right? Because there will be kids that will want to do this stuff, right? Because mm-hmm. I think that most of the time, magic slight hand is learned best by understanding what's wrong. Yeah, I've got it, a question it's the about weirdest. Yeah. It's the weird. It's it's a very weird concept where like if a kid says, "I want to learn the best second deal," right? And somehow Steve Forty is sitting next to him, and he's just like, <laughs> "Well, here," and he just shows him the real work, right? Mm-hmm. He wouldn't get it. He wouldn't get it. He will have to go through ten years of learning all the other stuff before he understands, right? Because that's what that's what magic is. It, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. It's it, what we're doing is we're saying, "I am an adult," right? Like let's say for example, I'm an artist, right? I say, mm-hmm. "I am an, an adult," and my art is to draw like a child. Right. Mm-hmm. All I can do is imitate and watch this child draw, but I'll never be a child. Right. So that's the same thing with sly of hand is that you get this weird thing where in the beginning you, you get sucked into it because of the mechanics. And like, sure. this, there's this, there's a very there's something beautiful about something so mechanical, mm-hmm. you know, that can create it's very disproportional what it can create. Right like what you know what 
the magic effect is with like an Elm Sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Even sure. though tr- trivial in a sense, but but then we start to kind of get into that too much, where it becomes like uh, originality for its own sake. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, right. And then yeah, on yeah, the yeah. way back down, on the way back down, it's it is very much like what Ben Earl is doing, and and like um and like Steve Forty and all those gamblers, which is I just want to. It's just a shuffle, right? Yeah. yeah. There's no floor. There's like you know, like a double lift. It's just a double lift. There's no floating double, snap double, and all this crap. There's none of none of that, right? Because you can tell that's the another layer where ultimately, sly hand should be just literally. I'm just shuffling. Nothing. The that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm it. Ter- I'm turning and, over a card. Yeah, and that's it. And yeah. but 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 to but the drive that you're asking me it would be. Uh, a simple one, which is I just look at a, a trick I like, and I just say, what what is the worst part of this trick? Like for example, um, invisible car uh, aces, right? The, mm-hmm. the, the palm invisible mm-hmm. palm aces, right? Oh, what's the worst part of that trick? Uh, the, last card. the last the last yeah. card, right? Yeah. And that's it. And then you just go, well, what can I do, right? So then that's that's how I hone in, right? But you know, obviously, fixing it is a different question. Sure. And then, so then, I would say from there, I just go, well, what is it that makes it worse, right? And then you have to kind of start thinking about questions like that. Okay. It, I, I mean, so it's easier picking way up the deck, say, picking up the deck that makes it worse. So how do I eliminate picking up the deck? Right. Is that right. The point? I, I, yeah, I guess. Well, here's the interesting. Well, make, let's make it easier. Let's go ambitious card. Right. Okay. It has the same thing, right? What ultimately what you're doing with with invisible palm aces is you're trying to figure out three uh, shuttle passes, right? Or four shuttle passes. It's kind of like a coins across in a mm-hmm. weird way, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and with ambitious with with ambitious card. What happens is it's just a control to the top, right? In a sense, right? And I would argue that a double lift in the middle come top is the best thing you can do, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's bar none. If you can just do a good double lift, right? I'm sure Andy sure. Gladwin's push push off, whatever, right? We're talking about like, uh, yeah. But but then what do we do? We we seem to start to degrade what the effect is, right? We do the best part as a mm-hmm. throwaway. Right, where it's going, yeah, there's stop. Oh, you didn't see it. Oh, let me do it again. Right, it's like, it's the, yeah, yeah. You're like, wait, 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 why is that the throwaway? And then you get progressively harder, but more convoluted. But uh-huh. for us, it's just yeah, more yeah, yeah. for us, right? We're like, oh, yeah, now, yeah. Oh, right. But then, but then the message gets to gets convoluted, right? So I remember I was, I had like one where a long time ago, I just go, I want to make a, a ambitious card. Where like you know like three of three, you know three phases, but the last phase is the double lift. Right. Right. Well, that that's interesting, but then, like then I got down to one, which is just basically I have the cards face up and I say name a card somewhere in the middle and they say it and I go oh this not this one and they just call it to the top, right, and I just put in the deck in their hands, right, and then I just go. And then uh, here's a here's a cr- crazy uh, tip for okay. all you guys. So only people in the podcast would know. So my friend Gary Al, long time ago, this guy was a, a side hand expert. He would do bottoms that you wouldn't believe, but he would do it like this. All right, mm-hmm. <laughs> you like look up, uh huh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he had the best uh, presentation for. Uh, a card under box, right? So what he would do is, you know, you pick it, palm it off, put it under the box, right? So a lot of times people will be like, "Oh, you mean that one?" And then people like, you know, they're like, "Oh, they just put it under there when we didn't expect it, right?" Uh-huh. So he would put the card under the box, put the cards on on the table, and he'll put his hands next to the cards, and he says, "I want you to put your hands on top of mine, <laughs> right?" So you're like this, and you say, "Look, you can feel the slightest." And you just like twitch, right? Slightest movement from my hand, right? And they say yes. And I say, now, in a second, I'm going to actually close your eyes. If you feel me move 
even for the slightest, call me out. All right? And they go, okay. Close your eyes, right? Close your eyes. Count to three. One, two, three. Open up your eyes. Did you feel me move? And they say no. And I just don't, I don't say anything. I just go, right? And you just look at the card. And I swear to God, <laughs> people will, will flip because here's the thing, right? What just happened there? What you did is you made this red herring ruse where now they just go, how did he get the card there when my eyes were closed? Right? That's the difference, right? Yeah. But also, it is a very Gabby thing too, right? Where now is they have to participate into the, the, the effect, right? So so with ambitious, uh, with ambitious card, I just tell them to put their hand like this, and I and I do this, and I just touch their shoulders like this, and I just say, "Look, just look at, look at me. Close your eyes. One, two, three. Did you feel me move? No. And we'll turn over the top card. <laughs> like, like beat that. Yeah. It, it's it's pretty it's pretty hard. So what what you're saying is is that that's uh like a analytic not not slide a hand based of how to improve a trick in my opinion, right? It's it, that's that's more of thinking why we get trapped in things. So, for sure. example, uh, out of sight, out of mind, mm -hmm. right? You know, Vernon's trick, beautiful trick. Mm, back when he invented it, right? Because I would like to think I'm not a historian, but I would think, what is the worst part of that trick? Do you think? It's the shuffling three yeah. to the top, to the middle, see, to the yeah, bottom, yeah, yeah. And, and you're like, do you see it? Do you see that's horrible, right? <laughs> uh, but I would imagine back then that method was revolutionary, right? Because maybe sure. I don't know if there was a lot of people doing mem deck work back then, but you know, from a shuffle deck and use. Mm -hmm. And then I think that was like one of the tricks in the early tricks where people gave you a bank of cards to think. Right, right. Because maybe it was like deal through and like remember the number, you know, but like at least this one opened up like this not just one selection it could have been more you know mm -hmm. so so if you had to ask him right because i always just go I, my question would be if i had real magical powers and for some reason i did card magic right what what would it look like right what would it look like yeah. i mean i would be like think of a card put the cards and i would just start pulling cards one by one right and feel and be like Ooh, mm, mm. all right what was your card boom right that's the effect, right? Uh -huh. Be beautiful, right? So the, 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 the question would be then, why don't we get to that point? Right. Right. Because if you think about it, everybody's improvement to this trick is what? Get to the worst part faster. Mm -hmm. Hey, I can shuffle three to the top, middle, and bottom in one overhand shuffle. Right. Right? <laughs> or, or like, you know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, maybe we do... Uh, three banks of four now they have 12 you know like there's a bunch of but why do we do this it's because we man, magicians are like collectors right we collect things so therefore when i improve on outside out of mind i limit myself within the confines not sadly not the, about the effect we confine ourselves to the method mm, right mm. and then so that's that's the question i always ask is we we can so that 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 all of a sudden becomes the, the effect right like the biddle trick right you know why mm -hmm. is it called the biddle trick it's like because which, we which... do the biddle move it's like, right it's like already it's such a bizarre way of of of, of thinking about effects right like putting the putting the move above the effect right yeah and it becomes the effect because what is the effect I, I mean, there's like, there's like mind reading, and then all of a sudden there's a transpo. Like for example, I always say, if a layman just said, "Hey, let's play this weird thing. Uh, think of a card." And layman, right? They're not yeah, magicians, yeah, yeah. right? And they go, "Think of a card." Okay. And I just take a deck and I just pull out five random cards. And I go, "Is one of these yours?" And they say, "Yes." That would be amazing, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. You'll be like, "What? Do it again, right?" <laughs> But, but what do magicians do, right? They go, all right, think of a card or pick it, whatever. It doesn't matter. But like, and then you go, look, I'm going to take out five random cards. And this is what magicians say. 
if you see your card, don't tell me you see it. <laughs> but, but how would you know, right? But that all of a sudden means the magician knows this is not the effect. No, I just want to go further down, yeah, yeah. right? And all of a sudden you're yeah. just like, wait, then why would you know? And then all of a sudden this very amazing randomness. You're like, you're like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> you're just like, don't say anything. Did you see it? Okay, good. <laughs> like, right? It's uh, so that that to me is all of a sudden when you start to think about things like that. It, it all of a sudden starts to break things down yeah. and then all of a sudden it gives you opportunity to to try to like to me it, it's just to try to approach what if i had real magic how far can i get there right yeah but here's the beauty it's not about getting there right it, it's about what do you, what have you learned so far in your magic career well you know that's why i learned like read books and all this stuff. It's just to say, well, how many ways can you spin a card? Mm -hmm. You just never know, right? It, and it's not about, but now you have to confine it within that effect and then see how close you can get to it. And most of the time, you'll veer off in an interesting direction and all of a sudden becomes cleaner, but you will never thought of it, right? Right. Like, that. that's that's the one way, Like like how gamblers magician gamblers you know what i'm saying like the jason mm -hmm. england the, the the mentality they have is just this is just a shuffle that's it and how close can i get to it that's it that's all they have there's no there's no uh quirkiness there's no oh this is cute right yeah, yeah. <laughs> like maybe there's a the same way you can say that about magic effects right yeah just say okay how do you do it if you had real magic powers what do you do this and then that's just that's it that's it right how close can you get to it Right, you know, so I think that answered your question. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I do. sorry. It was, it, 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 it more than answered the question. Um, talk to me about angles, mm -hmm. especially about passes and the 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 yeah, sure. one handed bottom palm because you've got an interesting take that I saw yeah. in the interview before. I'm um, thinking on slides of turning the deck that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the yeah, only totally. other the only other person I've seen because Fred Robinson used to do his pass like that, so mm -hmm. he'd go into because uh, then you've only got that bit, yep. you know. Right. So yeah, talk to us about angles and that x axis and y axis yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I think that um, this is going to be a very interesting new generation of magicians because you have magicians that are going to be growing up with like Instagram and mm -hmm. stuff where they have the webcam kind of magic, right? Which is even weirder because what really happens about, uh, let's see. So what it is, is if you really want to understand angles in real life mm -hmm. is this, uh, it's not perfect, but if you get like a wall mirror, mm -hmm. right. Or a, just a mirror, Right. What so what happens is how do you know how far the person is, right? Just imagine that the mirror is not there and it's just an open doorway. Okay. Right? And then your reflection is just a person standing there. So that would actually be how close that person is, if you just imagine there's no mirror there. So in a weird way, you will actually have to, have to kind of stand next to the mirror like this close. Right, right. Right, because then double it, and that's mm -hmm. how far like a standard like crotch magic, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> both staring at your crotch, like standing. That that's the kind of angle you want, right? And another weird thing is is that you you see a lot of uh, Instagram magicians doing this out of uh, not necessity because they don't have a tripod to have an angle high enough. Mm -hmm. Is that they just usually have it on a table. Right, and they're usually like this, right? This mm -hmm. is usually the angle you see, right? But that angle, for people who work live and stuff, that's like restaurant angles. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's that's pe That's like a person sitting down, uh -huh. and you're standing up doing yep. magic, right? So you get this weird sense of angles when you do it for live people, mm. right? Because that is not how they look at things, right? I tell people if they want to film and have their friend do it, 
here's the funniest thing. Because people are like, yeah, yeah, film me. And people do this, right? Like this high, right? No, that's a midget watching me, <laughs> right? No, seriously. It's, this, it's, <laughs> it's funny, right? And I say, do you, do you want to know how you do it? You have to do this. Right. And look down. If you want the real angle, just do this, right? Because people are just filming like this. And it's like, and, and you get a warped sense of what angles are, right? Yeah. So the easiest way to do this is just to imagine lines, right? Okay. So, for example, the camera here mm -hmm. is from here to here, right? So what you want to do is just imagine there's a line coming out of the deck and you want to point it at the camera, right? right? So you see... The thinner it is, that means I'm pointing it right at it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people think angles are like, oh, you got it. You got to be like, you know, like perfect. No. It's, it's, all you have to do is just understand what it is. You, you can get into the ballpark, but it's, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At least because you got hands in a way, right? But if you're just completely oblivious to it, then obviously everything will flash, right? But it's yeah, just yeah. to get in the ballpark. So there's two angles. So more for Instagram angles, I guess, it would be just a straight on line because mm -hmm. there's two big angles, which is this, and then one is this, going straight up. Imagine there's like a beam coming out, out of the deck, right? So, so for this kind of magic, obviously, you want to do like more diagonal palm shift stuff because that angle is this, right? Sure. You, you, can, you can hit those kind of angles, right? But if... They're from the top. Obviously, if you do this, and obviously they'll see everything, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> right? Because it's just because that's just not the angle, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but the same goes the other way, right? Because if people are looking up down, how do you get those angles, right? So, here's a, so the the midnight shift, you know, the, the iconic uh -huh, uh -huh. this thing, right? Yeah, not good, right? Because it might be good. Why are you suddenly? The... Right, right. Why are you doing this? Right. It's because this, because magicians con subconsciously know like, well, that's going to flash like here because this is not angle. But this is, so that's why they turn this towards you. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's how that, you know, you're like, oh, okay, that works. But then you have no motivation. Right. Yeah. So I would say sometimes these kind of moves, the, the top down moves it's harder for here yeah. but if we're both standing up right all of a sudden this this angle moves works but then if you're trying to like look up then it's weird because then you have to like, tilt the deck mm -hmm. high too high right that's why you go well that's the same thing as doing this right and now this is the same angle right to 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 them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And and that's and that was the one of the things I learned because I remember I was trying to palm, you know, like you have two cars and you're trying to palm one, right? And I was like, How the hell do you do this thing? Like 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 I gotta like get the angle and then you know like and then and then if they're looking up and down you're like, Holy crap, how do I how do I get that angle, right? Yeah. But then if you're just looking straight up and down in a sense like this and then you do this, all you have to do, you know, you just got yeah, the card yeah, palm, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. because it's just a straight up and then you just move this card up and around, right? And then you just go boom, right? Instead of me trying to be like, uh, uh, you yeah. know, like, no, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's the things that, again, it's hard to conceptualize because if you think about it, here's another weird thing about books, right? What books show you with images is just a lot of like moves like here, but they they're missing the context of w where the angles are, right? They get mm -hmm. like earnings, you know, diagonal palm shift, right? You you just get you just see like images like this, but then you're just like, but well, how? And then and then it, it makes sense back then because I'm sure nobody was doing stand up close-up magic back then right it was right. either at the table or mm -hmm. you're doing parlor right yeah so i think in their mind they're like well obviously there wouldn't be stand-up cocktail magicians trying to do a diagonal <laughs> palm shift <laughs> you know like but but i guess like our generation we just go oh 
there it is in the book, so therefore it's invisible, right? Yeah. We just assume. But like, I think, yeah, with angles is very important to understand that. But mostly like the Instagram magicians, like totally fine. But but oh, I'm here. You, you'll get into this weird sense of like, why is everything flashing when I do it in the real world? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, the, the, yeah. yeah, as I said, the Fred Robinson was the only other person that I've read about changing that angle. So Fred also, in his hands, color changes were events were were miracles which is another similarity you share with him what attracted you to a color change uh i think there was something about the concept of something like what i call micro magic which is like it's just a moment mm. right and you just go boom and then that's it right i think there's something beautiful to that like you know the the color change on Vanishing Ink. Yes, that, that we did thing. on Tricky so, Tuesday this week. Yeah, while not perfect, you know it's 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 approaching there, right? And I think that I remember showing it to a magician, and then he said uh, he he was he was a really good gaff maker, right? And he said, uh, "What if I told you I can come up with a gaff that looks just as good as that? Would you do it because it's easier?" And I said, no. And he said, why? He's like, well, I think audiences can feel when you do something and you care about it. Like I put my, a lot of years into that move, not because uh, I knew where I was going, right? Not because uh -huh. I knew where I was going, but because I put blood and sweat into it, right? And then you can tell there's not to, to, oh, oh, here's another weird thing like with conventions and sh seeing all these magicians all the all their girlfriends and wives say oh tony jane is so cool and great and i'm always like it's like weird thing about them and they always say the same thing which is i never knew they just said well when i see tony do something like with a color change i feel like he he wants to do it like you know what i'm saying like he like he cares about it right so i think there's there is definitely a line with that to me personally yeah because because when you do yeah, yeah let me show you and then you, you can feel uh, because i care I, i'm not just well one because it's hard so i have to concentrate <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's not like i can just whatever you know but but there is uh there there is a purity to me with my concept of magic is just that right is is that ultimately it comes down to uh, the, uh, the the trivialness of magic is what makes magic great, right? <laughs> is that no, no, seriously, like the, the more trivial it is, but it can make you feel that feeling that nothing mm -hmm. else gets. That's the beauty. That's that's the beauty between that and being a cult, right? Because the the, the beauty is that you know I'm doing sly hand, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't think so, then uh, you're already drinking the Kool Aid, and sure, sure. But 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 the beauty is, there's some you're, you're using s blood and sweat to create an illusion of something uh, perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Even like though they know perfection, yeah. What's going on? Creating perfection, the illusion of perfection with imperfect methods. Right. right? That's what sleight of hand is, right? That's the, that's 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 the that's my high road philosophical. Mm -hmm. reason why i'm staying like what i like why i like magic you know even though i'm going through like a midlife crisis of <laughs> magic like i i remember uh i was like i wanted i wrote an article i i didn't write the article but anyways but it was oh i wanted to call it uh the midlife crisis of a move monkey right <laughs> because it's like <laughs> well i'm not mystery school i'm not like talking about shiva the sun god or find some purpose but they're they're well, like what what is the purpose behind loving sly hand and being a move monkey what is that and then this is my reasoning which is basically come up with things that can create this illusion mm -hmm. of something perfect but you obviously know it's not perfect and that's the beauty of it right it's the same thing i i i, I have this speech because i you know when i when i went to bars all the time people always like what are you like a gambler i'm like oh no i'm a magician and they're like well show me something why did you bring cards out you know and i used to be like oh this Hey, I'm not a monkey, you know, but although you want to do tricks, you know, be yeah. like, hey, I'm a person, damn it. 
and then I always go, yeah, sure, I'll show you something. Uh, what, what, uh, in a sec, let me finish this drink. What's your name, by the way? Because all the time they just ask you to do stuff, but they don't even ask you your name. <laughs> so I always like to do that. Well, what's your name, by the way? And they always go, oh, oh, uh, yeah, you know. And I just talk to them. I just say, uh, do, uh, uh, as a kid, did you ever do magic? And they go, no, I, you know, blah blah blah. And I say, well, you know, I, I did, you know, big, you know, obviously, but like. Uh, but now I, I fell in love with it for a different reason. I just go, you know, this is a Rolex watch. Took me seven years to pay off. I'm not rich, right? But there's a reason I love this watch, right? It's not because it's gold and there's diamonds. No, no, no. It's because there's people in this world that make little gears, right? And they put it into this watch and try to do it. And even the best watch, like half a million dollars with the turbulence and stuff, they still lose two or three seconds a month, right? It's not perfect. But yet, I can buy a $2 like electronic watch or my iPhone key keeps better time than this. Mm. So why don't I buy that, right? Because it isn't about keeping time, right? It's about the people, right? It's about the imperfection of this, trying to achieve this concept of perfection, right? And that's why I fell in love with, you know, magic with like sly hand, right? Because it's all just, it's all just this and it's trivial as hell. It's card tricks, but there's something beautiful about it. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so when I say that, what happens is they, uh, so here's my very bizarre way of thinking why people heckle you. Honestly, I think the reason is because they, tr they think that's what the game is. Right. So you, you have friends that, know you do magic and they know a little bit like oh like a double sure. lift or something right yeah, not yeah, like yeah. crazy but i would say in my lifetime all those friends are your staunch defenders when you do magic they're like hey hey right like to me right and i think the reason they are is because they at first they go oh magic uh, i i you know i had a co-worker like that like oh this is stupid and then i you know we started hanging out and now he's like dude you should watch this is great it's because they see you care about it Right. Yeah. And they say, I did not know people can put time into this thing. Right. And then they're amazed. They're just like, wow, this guy actually studies it. What's right. studying that? You know, and all of a sudden they get right. It's because you're not a one dimensional character. Right. Because yeah. all conversations start like this. Right. You go, oh, da, da, da. and then sooner or later, if you like each other, you know, conversationally, you just go, well, what do you do? You know, and I used to say, I'm a magician. And you go, uh, yeah. Mm, they're showing me something <laughs> right, because they don't know what else to say yeah, yeah, yeah. right you just you just threw it on their lap right yeah. it's like uh it's like i think charlie Theron is the most beautiful woman in the world right and if she's like hey what's up what are you doing i'll be like uh you like movies like i don't know what to say right <laughs> it's the same thing right but, right so so what happens is you go you throw them in and then they go i have no i don't know what a magician magic is i never met a magician what do, uh, show me a trick because that's all they know. So yeah. what happens? They, be, they, they make you become a one-dimensional magician, right? And then if you say yes, they become a one-dimensional layman because they think all of a sudden this is yeah, what man. I'm supposed to do, yeah, yeah, right? This yeah, is what I'm yeah. supposed to do, right? But if you cons – I don't know if there's a way you can do this in a gig, but I do conversational stuff. You know, I just – you know. So then I give him the story, which is true. I truly believe in it. And then you see them. They just go, wow. Well, I mean, I would love to see something sometimes. So now they have other things to grasp onto, right? Sure. Like one is something philosophically I think about magic. And they had no idea you can think about like a card trick like that. And yeah. now they have more things to think about. Yep, yep. Right? Other than just to be like, eh, whatever. They can. They, they can still revert to it because yeah. – I think sometimes in the in the moment they still they don't they still don't know how to reply to it, but at sure. least they have something else to grab onto, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. But man, that, I, I don't all, even know what your question. No, neither do I, man. <laughs> neither do I. Well, all that, all that. Like, my my wife is the same at conventions when when it looks like somebody isn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You talk about you you talk about doing the sleight of hand so much and hide so so nothing happens so you're hiding hiding the skill you know that it's not overt displays yeah. and that's what she loves when somebody does something but it doesn't look like it's just like you said with the ambitious card thing and you put their hands on the shoulders and it's like i'm, I'm not doing anything 
And right. So so you spend all this time working on this fabulous, beautiful gears in your Rolex, mm -hmm. these little things, right. and then you hide them. What's your take on the approach where people are a bit more uh, obvious with their skill? Um, it's hard, right? Because what define there's a lot of things there, which is one, I think we as a community of magicians need to start to um, express more of what those words mean when somebody says, when a magician says to another magician, I didn't see you do anything. We need as a community to discuss what those words mean. Okay. Okay. For for instance, I can do this, right? I can just stand there and be like, and people are like, I didn't see you do anything, right? But what does that mean? What do, what does that mean in that context, right? Because I literally didn't do anything, <laughs> right? But but I did, right? Because nobody would do this. Yep. I mean, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So what, are, so, so what are we talking about? So I think when magicians say that, they just say, did you do a move there and you hit it well? But the external reality of what's happening, we are not discussing, right? <laughs> like, right? There's no external reality, right? And we get stuck in this weird method uh -huh. of what defines the reality, right? And then you just go, but that doesn't make any sense, right? Like action-wise. Right in in reality, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so right, the Ascanio, right, internal external reality mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. thing. So, I think we need to really define when we say that, because we inflate other magicians' egos, right, for wrong purposes. Maybe for the right one, you mm -hmm. never know, right? But 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 you you see how we we get this weird because magic is duality of external internal that we. We, we, we don't quite know how to express it so we can actually all rise like academically sure slide of hand wise you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying I, I think there is a lot of things missing there because magic is uh, here's magic is like this uh you want to learn the piano so you come to me and I'm a piano teacher and I say, well, the first thing is learn the C scale, all the white notes, da 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 right? Come back in a week. You come back in a week and I say, uh, show me something. And then you, you start playing like this with your elbow. Da, da, da. <laughs> and you do this. And I'm like, what the, hell are you, what the hell are you doing? And you're like, hey, relax, dude. This is original. Right? <laughs> and I'm just like, but, but we're not... We're not even talking about music, right? We're talking about how to operate this machine. Yeah, yeah. Right? And and this is what magic has become. Not 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 real not real magic, you know like the you know, but I'm talking about because when I talk about magic when I say it like this, I talk about magic market, the community, right? Mm -hmm. Because that ultimately is the bed. Yeah, of course. That raises all ships, right? So, but you can tell that, that's that's where we're going right it used to be like i don't know if you knew the clips shift you know like mm -hmm. the, the that hard move years ago because remember like it used to be sly of hand move monkeys got their fame from actually doing hard moves right yeah and then people are like oh you can actually do a hard move doesn't mean if it actually fits or whatever but then that was the last hard move that people learned because after that all 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 I need to do now is like, oh yeah, I saw the trailer. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Like then nobody puts time into it, right? We become very collect collecting cards and just doing that. So it's harder to get people, I think, you know, to just learn things. But then again, how do you learn things if everything is around? I didn't see you do anything, right? Like mm. method. Right, it's the biddle trick. It's it's all about collecting, right? All these things come together. Right, I, I'm a collector. I collect things, so therefore, da da da. You know, all, all this stuff is it's it's we we need to end end the older 
gatekeeping, right? It's like, oh, I just hide crap from you, right? But what, what I love about the Spanish people is they... <laughs> That's what, I, the next I, question! The next <laughs> question! <laughs> All right, go ahead and ask <laughs> You're an adherent to the Spanish school of magic. Talk to us about the impact Gabby has had on your magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I think uh, Spanish magic in general is that I think Danny D'Arty said this, where they just go, yeah, we just teach you everything. Like, if you want to ask, I will, we teach it to you. They're not like a, a stereotypical like American. They're like, oh, we gatekeep, you know, oh, you didn't know it's Vernon's secret thing. No. Yeah. And then, and but the Spanish say, well, we teach you everything, but you have to be smart enough to understand what it means, right? Right. Right. <laughs> right? So, because, yeah, because uh, that's that. But w- with Gabby, I would say Gabby was the turning point of me coming back down from ah, how, why? complex how? sleight of hand. Uh, well, he – well, one, first thing is he answered my question when layman said, so do other magicians fool you? And I always go, oh, I, know, I mean, I know what they're doing, you know, but we appreciate each other, blah, blah, blah. Right. That's what we say, right? But Gabby, like, I know exactly what he's doing, but he makes me feel magic, like mm-hmm. a layman, or at least mm-hmm. what I remember what it feels like, right? Like, I swear, I swear to God. Like, he has this trick. He just does one glide. I know he's doing the glide, but yet I feel the magic. I don't know if you know the trick I'm talking about. No, I don't. But no. it's it, it's Dunsbury. It's the oh, old delusion. Dunsbury that, delusion. Yeah, yeah, right. Where you go, you sh- accidentally show them the card, and then you're mm-hmm. like, there it is, and there's the card, right? So this effect is so. It, it's also on his Instagram. You know, sadly he passed away, but you know yeah. the, the the one that he has. He has. Yes. There's a performance of him doing it. Anybody, you should watch it I'll multiple put a link times in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, multiple times. Because there's, and I'll tell you why. So, so the tricky, you know, like they pick a card and you accidentally flash it. This you, this card tells you this red or black, and you glides it. This one tells me if it's, you know, this one tells me how far down the deck it is, right? And then you say, look, you have to count down six cards, and they count down six cards: one, two, three, four, five, six. And how does the original trick work? And you go, do you believe that's your card? And they say, no. And they say, why? And you just turn it over, and there it is, right? Like that's the original trick, right? But they go, but it's not, it's not there, right? That's, but but what he does. He just goes, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now I have to ask you a very important question. Yes or no, do you believe this is your card? And they say no. And, you, and then he just goes, well, if you don't believe in it, then obviously it won't work. And then he just shows the wrong card. And I say, I'm sorry, at the forefront, I should have told you this. Is that this only works if you actually believe in it. And so, so that's my fault. That's my fault. But can you, for the next 30 seconds, you can don't patronize me. Just for the next thirty seconds, say you believe in magic. And they say yes, and they go, "All right, uh, hold on to the cards." And you flip over all three cards. How many cards do you need to count down? Six. Count down six, and that's when they realize the cards not there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you just grab everything. And I say, "Now, yes or no? Do you believe this is your card?" And they say yes, and they turn it over. It's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> right? Even me explaining it to you. Right, and you yeah. know the yeah. method. Yeah. You the still feels. feel it, right? Yeah. You just, right, you just go, Whoa. right? And I remember him doing that to me, and I just went, "Oh my god, that's the most magical thing that I've ever experienced in a long time." And and that's the be- oh, man. It, not only is, did he have the, the chops, right? He would just explain some theory and we were like yeah whatever and he just did it and he's like, oh let me give you an example we we'll be like, <laughs> it's like we just felt it you're like how how does this man do this thing? but but i'll tell you in new york uh we were at a bar and there's some layman friends i knew uh, and i say oh i would love for him to do magic to layman even though pete bow was there uh translating and he go can you do some magic and he goes yeah sure bring him over he does that trick right but forgets to control the car to the bottom so the glide, nothing works, right? But he didn't know. And he goes, is that your card? No, 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 no. He goes through the whole thing. They never see their card. Right? And they go, yes or no, do you believe this is your card? And they go, no. And they go, well, you have to believe. And he goes, da, 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 da. Yes or no, do you believe this is your card? And they go, yes. And then turn over, is that your card? And they go, no. Right? And then he just goes, oh, oh f- ah, put the mind, you know, whatever. And then he does some other tricks, right? They are leaving. And I, 
I promise you I'm not making this up. They're leaving, and they were only talking about that first trick that he messed up. But they were saying, I, how did he do it? He, they, they were saying, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, they didn't care. Yeah. They did not care that the car wasn't there. They just said, that first trick was so cool. Like they so were, what <laughs> was that? Why? That they wanted... Right? And I, I, Right. That they wanted to and, believe yes. so much, yes, and and not and not in a way like uh, like a cult member. Right? No, 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 no. And I asked him, and I I was so flabbergasted that they were talking about that first trick, and not because it messed up, because they're like that was so magical, right? And I asked him, and you know, and I I'm sure I'm. Uh, this is my interpretation of Gab. I mean, I only met him three times, you know, and I wish I seen him more, but but he had things where he just goes for example what what laymen do this is what he says what laymen do is when you go pick a card right in their mind this is how they look at you with their hands crossed and they're like, oh, mm-hmm. let's see let's see what you got right this is this in their mind that's what they're doing right and they go pick a card right and he goes put it between your hand like this and then do it and they go do you know what you just did and layman will be like i picked the card Right, <laughs> I picked the card, and then he goes, "No, no, no! You did something more. You created a mystery, right?" And all of a sudden, he says, "All of a sudden, Lehman just go. All of a sudden, oh. Lehman just go. Okay, <laughs> right?" <laughs> I was like, that, "That right there, I was just like, my God, that is so beautiful, right?" And it's because what he says is that's why that Dunsbury delusion trick is so important. Is that he goes. He makes the layman participate in the effect, even though it's fictional. It doesn't matter if it's real. It doesn't matter if you know what the, the method is, right? It's because they're participating, right? And it's not participation, what we think, which is, uh, stand up, pick a card, now sit your ass back down. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like, but they participated. No, right? It's like you, 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 you get them to in the effect, right? It's like, oh, my God. And that's that was, you know, uh, have you seen his cards across with the mm. roses? You're like, oh my! When he does that, and the cards appear in this guy's hands, I, I literally start. I, I, I was like, what? But it was funny because we it was he did it at a lecture, and the guy he did it to has no emotions, right? <laughs> he's he's always like that. Yeah, you know, whatever. But I think that's what sold it because when he had three extra cards in his hands, <laughs> he didn't remove, he didn't react. He didn't go, as he was counting 10, realizing there's 13, he didn't go, oh, there's more cards. No, he just went, eight, nine, 10. Right? But we were sitting in the audience, like a, a lecture, which is like, the, car, the cards just appeared because he didn't react. <laughs> so we what... were just like, how is this possible? <laughs> so how do we. How do we make magic more like that? How do you start think, that thought process? That 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 story that you just told right. about you you made a mystery, right? Man, so, right. so, so it, how can normal people start to think like that? Start to change what they're doing to make it magic? It's it's, it's hard. It's just so it's so hard because, like like what you said, like if I just wrote that up. Gabby, I'm sure you wrote. I mean, I slowly translate some of the lecture notes, and it's that dry. It's like, yeah, you just do a glide, and that's it. But like, not there's no nothing about like the reason I do this is da 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 da. And then if you just show people that, there's like, you know, like the magicians, they wouldn't know, mm. right? And, and I think I, I get. I, I guess again, is how do you get above, not not like elitism, but we like there there is a place in magic for me about peer to peer originality and cool crazy moves right because i believe there is a space for that right is that the only space because i think that's where people are starting to go to mm. right is that all Playing i care the about piano is with the elbows. right but there but from that you could go well i didn't know you can go that far and then start to apply things right Fair. There's, yeah there's, yeah there is a space for that but if that's the only space then it's horrible mm. 
there there has to be a space to be allowed to do that because here's here's the thing it's like me playing the the clarinet right well is you know am i an artist i don't know right but let's say i've been doing it for 40 years and now i start to blow really hard and start to experiment and try Mm. to push this clarinet to the limits right And and you're like wow these noises are crazy yeah he's an artist because he's pushing a limit what about a homeless guy seeing the clarinet and just turns mm-hmm. it upside down and starts blowing the other away? Mm-hmm. Is he an artist? <laughs> right? But right? But but it's all about intent and it's all about like what you mean by you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. That. Intent's an interesting uh, word. Yeah. yeah, but 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 to 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 your point about with Gabby, I think Gabby making him more known to the people that that is a great gateway. Mm-hmm. to to that because everybody can do a collide everybody can do this thing and then if they actually just sat down just just learn just to go okay i'm going to learn it and try to believe fictionally yep yep, yep. about what i'm doing right and then just do it you you will see that it catches on really quick like for example uh here's another great lesson he, he has a uh aces through the table right mm-hmm. beautiful routine oh my goodness right so i remember doing this for a layman and the last ace, she goes, I know how you did it. And I say, how? Oh. And he goes, oh, it goes up your sleeve. Right? goes up your sleeve. And, then, and I just said, oh, no, no, no. And I rolled my sleeve. No, no, look, 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 look. Da, da, da. And then I flashed. And she caught me. Whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> da, 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 da. And then I asked Gabby. And I said, what would you do at that moment? Other than not messing up, you know, about when they say sleeve. And he goes, that's where you had it wrong. Right? Because fictionally... What were you claiming in the beginning? That I'm knocking on the table and I say, I, actually, here's the funny thing. I brought you guys here because of this table. Yeah. No, no, here, listen, listen. And I just knock really hard here. Look, look, right here. I just knock soft. It doesn't matter. They, they obviously know, none, but I just go, it's soft right here. No. I'm, 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 I'm cheating you guys. I brought you over here. I, it took me a week to get you guys to this table, you know. At, at this restaurant and then you just do it right da, 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 and see see how soft it is da, 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 da. and he goes if that's your fictional magic that is this if they say uh it goes up your sleeve you have to do this i know how you do it yeah i'm showing i'm showing you and it goes up your sleeve why would i put it on my sleeve it, it's easier to go through the table <laughs> right and you just keep doing it right because you have to that the buying it, it, into that internal yes yes and the the better it is the more fictional trivial it is the better to me right i'm not really claiming right i'm not trying to like scientifically do this but because i'm doing this right so you can't break it you can't just say look the deck is normal none of that you have to get all of that out right so that's why you know, he is like it's a very and I mean, we everybody always labels him this like anti Tamaris kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There is an there is a world for that. You know, Ozzy Wind does it beautifully. You know, the whole you know, I don't, you know, I don't touch you know all that crap, right? You know, like it's great because he's consistent about it mm-hmm. with, through his whole show. So that's what it becomes, which is great. Totally fine. I just. Personally, I just like Gabby's stuff more because I don't do a whole show about it. I just do these little weird moments, yeah, yeah. which really catches on. I think another uh, resource would be just the jerks. I yeah. think the jerks, I think the jerks stuff is so good that I don't care if he makes it up. I don't care if I don't. I don't care if he's like, oh, this is what I do, and I just go, and then people are like, no, you don't. I don't care because ultimately, is that we should try to do it like that right mm. that's what we should try to do mm. right it doesn't matter if he didn't do it or not i don't care right it's like oh yeah you know i, I lost 80 pounds and you know grew my hair back just for this moment <laughs> if you did it that's great if you didn't it doesn't matter because yeah. that is beautiful right because that goes beyond the method right like it goes beyond the method but the method is important too because that's how that's how you keep people in, <laughs> right? Sure. That's how you keep people, like because they're they're not everybody can be performers. Mm. 
I'm not performing. I'm not performing. And I think, you know, like, for instance, like I've been, I haven't touched cards in a long time, like probably like a year or two. Ever. But obviously when, you know, my height, I was like, obviously I can probably get a close up show at the castle. I know enough people. Yeah. You know, obviously I have to put the work in. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, that would be my obvious next step in my thinking as a magician. And all of a sudden I just didn't care. All right. And I just go, why don't I care? It's like, you know, it's because in my mind, I just love learning. That's what I do. I, I just love learning. And, and when it comes time to actually performing, like, oh, nah, I'm too lazy, scared and all this stuff, whatever. But, you know, ultimately it is about learning. So well, what it comes down to is that we need to figure out a way to get this community all on the same page right that's what it comes back to like what does it mean when i say it? you don't see anything right we, we mm-hmm. have so many we have so many mixed signals and mixed ways of of validating yourself yeah, yeah. within this within this community or judging right yeah judging uh, and, and everything that we alt and and what's even worse is that we're not even judging each other on our music we're judging each other on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which is even which is even weirder yeah. right it's like it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like and, and then and then we're, we're, it's like we, we, we get into this whole thing you know like it's like uh there's an analogy like uh if you, if you ever watch lords of the rings and then like a dragon appears mm-hmm. do you like stand up and be like there's there's no such thing as dragons get your money back Right, just leave the theater. You know, it's like yeah, no, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. no, no, right? But, but because as long as the story, the plot is interesting, right? Brings we in, we yeah, go yeah. along with we go along mm-hmm. with it, right? But but a magician's version of this movie would be a dragon appears and there'll be a vo like, this is a real dragon. <laughs> no, no, no. Zoom in. There's no pixels. I, I wish you were here. This is a real. <laughs> You're like we didn't ask, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. What is this, right? It's like. I, like Forrest Gump is my favorite movie, right? And then it makes me cry every time I watch it. Imagine I'm leaving with you after we watch it, and I, I'm emotionally touched, and we're walking out, and you're like elbowing me. And you're like, and I go, hey, and he's like, you know Forrest Gump? I'm like, yeah. And it's like, you know, he's an actor, right? <laughs> 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 Who cares, right? He's actually that... called Tom Hanks. Did you right? know? It's like, it's like, yeah, yeah. But, but you would be proud. You're like, he's an actor. <laughs> Like, okay, right? But we watch uh, David Copperfield. We watch a magic show when we leave, and you're like, I think there's strings in the second act. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. probably, right? But why, right? So, can we get magic to the point when I say there's strings in the second act? I say, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Who cares? But it's yeah, yeah, beautiful, yeah. you know, uh, right? Because that's, 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 that's the, that's the weird part about magic, you know? It's like, and also, like, imagine we were at the after party, and I go, "There's Tom Hanks." I go up to him and I say, "Hey, Tom, I just want to say this movie is beautiful." I just, that's... he's like, "Oh, thank you." And I go, "But I know what you did, okay? <laughs> I know what you did." That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't see it, actor. but I knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're an actor. Okay? <laughs> I just want, I want to tell you, oh, I know what you did, yeah, okay? Man. And then only magicians would be like, "What are you talking about? I don't do so." Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weirder. Like, and Tom Hanks is like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Tom Hanks is like, what are you talking about? I'm not an actor. <laughs> it's like, I'm Forrest Gump. It's like, <laughs> so you get this, all these weird messages. And then just us laughing about this just tells you how much. How you bad bring. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Is it bad? Because that's just ultimately what I want. Like, a Derek DeGaudio show. Mm. I think is it the best magic show but there's a lot of magicians that would say that's not a magic show mm. this theater right this is what they say they're like that he does great theater using magic as an element right but to me i say this is it's theater magic. but also a magic show right because but then i start asking them, i say can you boil down what then what is a magic show right 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 what, right. what is the essence of a magic show it, it has to i guess method I guess it boils down to that you don't know the method. Is that what it is? 
because you could you because you can be like oh I can create wonder magic is about creating wonder and, and, and you know suspense whatever right all, all the whatever pretty words we do yeah. and I say but a book can do that mm-hmm. like Avatar you know the you know like James Cameron the tall blue people I can have my roommate painting himself blue going to Comic Con on stilts. And I go, you know the movie's fake, right? And they're like, yeah, of course I do, right? But they want to believe, right? Yeah. They, they want it so to bad. Yeah. They would have painted themselves blue and walk on stilts. Mm. They know it's fake. But can – are you saying – but that is way more impressive than magic, mm. right? Because they want to believe it so hard, right? So, so, so then what is it? So then, so then, so when people are like, "Oh, that's why a magic show is," no, it isn't because movies can do that. Anything can do that. So then, yeah. what does it come down to? It, it, essence is it, it? Is it really just a method? Is it just really like what does a mentalism show if people believe you? Is there one? <laughs> yeah, that, that's an interesting question, right? Yeah, I read your mind. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah that's what you this do. This is boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so 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 then the show is all about like proving it to you. So then there's like this weird layer, like okay, so then this is all fake, and then you're like, no, it's not fake. I'm a real mentalist. And then why are you doing this show? Yeah. Why, why are you trying to prove to me? <laughs> you know, it's like there's so many weird layers we put on, and that's why Gabby, I feel like it, it, it gives you a path at least to be like, hey, at least try this out fictional yeah. magic just go for it just go all in you're not trying to be a guru trying to convince people that you're a savior no you're just proving people this table is soft to see how far you can commit to it mm. and then you'll be surprised that people will be like that's uh, magical right you know yeah tony we are so horribly over time um <laughs> that i think i'm gonna have this. to cut this into another two-parter um and I hope that's I hope that's made some people think about how we can all improve our magic. Um, I always end the show with four quick fire questions, and you've already given me the answer to one of them. Um, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. I'm favorite down. movie? Oh, oh Twilight. <laughs> More scum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite person or people who make music? Music, wow! Uh, yeah, Casey and the Cool Gang. And finally, is that... Casey and the Sunshine yeah. Band. Yes. Yeah. Well, cool. And uh, finally, who would you rather fight: a hundred tiny Joshes or one massive Andy? Mm. Mm. Well, Andy has perfect vision now, so at least I can. He got that laser surgery a while mm-hmm. back, so. Probably 100 Josh's. Okay. Yeah. Tony Chang. But they'll still be pretty tall. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Chang, thank you so much for your time. That has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.